Section 1 Introduction In the world of gaming and media, creating 3D content is a crucial yet time-consuming process. It often requires skilled designers to spend hours or even days crafting a single 3D asset. Therefore, a system that allows non-professionals to generate 3D content easily would be incredibly valuable. There are three main types of 3D object generation methods currently in use, template-based generation, 3D generative models, and 2D lifting methods. However, due to the limited availability of 3D models and the complexity of the data, the first two methods struggle to create a wide variety of objects. They tend to produce content that falls within certain categories, typically simple, real-world objects. In contrast, the industry often requires 3D assets that are complex, artistic, and sometimes non-realistic. Recently, 2D lifting methods have shown promise in this area. These methods, exemplified by systems like DreamFusion and Magic 3D, use pre-trained 2D generation models to guide the optimization of a 3D representation. These 2D models, trained on large datasets of 2D images, can generate new and unique scenes based on text input, making them excellent tools for creating artistic 3D assets. However, these models have a significant limitation, they only understand 2D. This means they can only supervise the creation of a 3D asset from a single viewpoint, leading to inconsistencies when the asset is viewed from different angles. This can result in unstable generation and severe artifacts. In 2D lifting techniques, challenges arise due to the lack of comprehensive multi-view knowledge or 3D awareness during the optimization process. These challenges include the multi-face Janus issue, where the system repeatedly generates content described by the text prompt, and content drift across different views. To address these issues, we propose multi-view diffusion models. These models generate a set of images from multiple viewpoints that are consistent with each other. We maintain the architecture design of 2D image diffusion but modify it slightly for multi-image generation. This allows us to use pre-trained 2D diffusion models for transfer learning to inherit their generalizability. To ensure the consistency of our model, we render a set of multi-view images from a real 3D dataset, called Objiverse. By training the model on both multi-view images and real images, we find that the resulting model can achieve both good consistency and generalizability. We further apply these models to 3D generation via multi-view score distillation. The multi-view supervision from our model is much more stable than that of single-view 2D diffusion models. And we can still create unseen, unique 3D contents as from pure 2D diffusion models. Inspired by DreamBooth and DreamBooth 3D, we also use our multi-view diffusion model to assimilate identity information from a collection of provided images. It demonstrates robust multi-view consistency after such a few show fine-tuning. When incorporated into the 3D generation pipeline, our model, which we call MV Dream, successfully generates 3D nerf models without the Janus issue. It either surpasses or matches the diversity seen in other state-of-the-art methods. Section Summary The process of creating 3D content is time-consuming and requires skilled designers, but a system that allows non-professional users to easily generate 3D assets would be valuable. Existing methods for 3D object generation have limitations in terms of generalization and the complexity of the generated content. Recently, 2D lifting methods have shown promise by using pre-trained 2D generation models to generate 3D assets, but they suffer from issues such as multi-view consistency and artifacts. To address these challenges, we propose multi-view diffusion models that generate a set of consistent multi-view images. By training the model on both multi-view and real images, we achieve good consistency and generalizability. Our model, MV Dream, successfully generates 3D nerf models without the multi-face issue and achieves diversity comparable to state-of-the-art methods. Section 2 Related Work and Background Let's delve into the related work and background of our study. Section 2.1 3D Generative Models The importance of 3D generation has led to the application of almost all deep generative models to this task. Henderson and his team used variational autoencoders, VAEs, to generate textured 3D models. However, their research primarily focused on simpler models that use multi-view data. With the advent of generative adversarial, GAN, models, which have shown improved results in image synthesis, many studies have explored training 3D-aware GANs using 2D data. One of the key benefits of these methods is that they don't require real 3D or multi-view data for training, allowing them to be trained solely on single-view images. However, like their 2D counterparts, these models struggle with generalizability and training stability when generating a variety of objects and scenes. As a result, 
Diffusion models, which have made significant strides in general image synthesis, have become a recent focus in 3D generation studies. Depending on the chosen 3D representation, various diffusion models have been developed, including those using triplane or feature grid. However, current 3D diffusion models are mainly designed for specific objects like faces and shape net objects. Their ability to generalize to the same extent as their 2D counterparts remains unproven, possibly due to constraints in the 3D model or architectural design. It's worth noting that there is ongoing research aimed at reconstructing object shapes directly from single-view image inputs, in line with the increasing stability of image generation techniques. Section 2.2. Diffusion models for object novel view synthesis Recent studies have also explored the direct synthesis of novel 3D views without the need for reconstruction. For example, some researchers have applied diffusion models to the ShapeNet dataset. Others have combined a stable diffusion model with an epipolar feature transformer to create a view-conditioned diffusion model in the latent space. At the same time, some researchers are working to improve the view consistency of the diffusion model by reprojecting the latent features of the input view before diffusion denoising. A common limitation of these approaches is that they are tied to their specific training data, with no proven ability to generalize to diverse image inputs such as the generated ones. In contrast, some researchers have used a pre-trained image variation stable diffusion model and then fine-tuned it on a large 3D render dataset. However, the images synthesized from such studies, as demonstrated by the 0123 demo, still struggle to maintain realistic geometric consistency, resulting in noticeable blurriness in the output 3D models. Recently, a multi-view diffusion model for panorama with homographer guided attention has been proposed, which differs from our approach where 3D correspondence is not available. Section Summary Various deep generative models, such as variational autoencoders, VAEs, and generative adversarial networks, GANs, have been explored for 3D generation. However, these models face challenges in terms of generalizability and training stability. Diffusion models have shown advancements in general image synthesis, but their application to 3D generation is limited to specific objects. Recent research has also focused on synthesizing novel 3D views directly without reconstruction but these approaches are bounded to their training data and struggle with maintaining realistic geometric consistency. Section 2.3 Lifting 2D Diffusion for 3D Generation In this section, we'll discuss how we can enhance 2D diffusion models to generate 3D objects, a task that has proven challenging due to the complexity of 3D generative models. Some researchers have tried to tackle this problem by using 2D diffusion models as a foundation for 3D generation, combining them with a 3D representation like a nerf. A key technique in this approach is score distillation sampling, SDS, which uses diffusion priors as score functions to guide the optimization of a 3D representation. While these methods can create realistic and diverse objects without needing any 3D data, they often struggle with maintaining consistency across multiple views. Moreover, each 3D model generated requires individual optimization, including adjusting prompts and hyperparameters, to avoid generation failures. In our approach, MV Dream, we've significantly improved the robustness of the generation process. We can produce satisfactory results using a single set of parameters, eliminating the need for individual tuning. We've also explored creating 3D models based on a collection of identification images, a concept introduced by Dream Booth 3D. Unlike Dream Booth 3D's three stage optimization process, our MV Dream approach simplifies the process by leveraging the inherent consistency of our diffusion model. We start by training a multi-view dream booth model, followed by 3D nerf optimization. Our MV dream booth model not only trains faster but also produces 3D models with superior geometric consistency, significantly reducing challenges related to Janus. So, why use multi-view diffusion? To generate 3D objects without multi-view consistency issues, a common solution is to enhance its viewpoint awareness. Some methods incorporate viewpoint descriptions into texts as conditions, while others include exact camera parameters. However, we believe that even a perfect camera conditioned model may not fully solve the problem, as the content in different views could still mismatch. We draw inspiration from video diffusion models. Since humans don't have a real 3D sensor, we typically perceive a 3D object by circling around it and observing it from all possible perspectives. This process is similar to rendering and watching a turnaround video. Recent works on video generation show that it's possible to adapt image diffusion models to generate consistent content. However, applying such video models to multi-view generation is not straightforward, as maintaining geometric consistency can be more delicate than temporal consistency. 
Our initial experiments show that content drifting could still occur between frames for video diffusion priors when there's a large viewpoint gap. Moreover, video diffusion priors are usually trained on dynamic scenes, which can create a domain gap when used as a prior for static scenes. Based on these observations, we believe it's crucial to train a multi-view diffusion prior directly for the 3D generation task. This way, we can use a 3D rendered dataset to generate static scenes and have access to precise camera parameters. Section Summary In order to address the challenge of 3D generative models struggling to generalize to different types of objects, researchers have explored the use of 2D diffusion models as a prior for 3D generation. This involves coupling the 2D diffusion models with a 3D representation and using diffusion priors as score functions to supervise the optimization of the 3D representation. While previous methods have shown promising results, they often suffer from the multi-view consistency problem and require individual tuning of parameters. In our approach, called MVDream, we improve generation robustness and achieve satisfactory results with a single set of parameters. We also introduce the concept of subject-driven 3D model creation using identification images, and streamline the process by training a multi-view dream booth model followed by 3D NERF optimization. Section 3.2 Text to Multi-View Diffusion Model in this section, we'll discuss our unique text to multi-view diffusion model. This model uses 3D datasets to create multiple consistent images from different viewpoints, which helps in training the model. To put it simply, we start with a set of noisy images, a text prompt, and some camera parameters. The model then uses these inputs to generate a series of images of the same scene from different angles. Once trained, this model can be used to generate 3D images using techniques like score distillation sampling, SDS. We aim to retain the generalizability of text-to-image models, so we try to keep the architecture of the 2D model as intact as possible while fine-tuning it for the text-to-multi-view task. However, the original text-to-image model can only generate one image at a time and doesn't consider camera conditions. This leads us to three main questions. 1. How can we generate a set of images from the same text prompt that are consistent with each other? 2. How can we incorporate camera pose control into the text-to-image model? Three. How can we maintain the quality and generalizability of the original diffusion model? To generate consistent images, we adapt the attention layers to model the cross-view dependency, similar to video diffusion models. However, we found that simple temporal attention wasn't enough to learn multi-view consistency, and content drifting still occurred. Instead, we decided to use 3D attention. We achieved this by connecting different views in the self-attention layer. This way, the model can generate similar images without extensive fine-tuning. After training on multi-view datasets, this 3D-attended diffusion U-net can generate consistent images even when the view gap is large. It's important to note that with 3D attention, our multi-view diffusion model doesn't care about the order of the viewpoints or position conditions, unlike video diffusion models. We also experimented with adding a new 3D self-attention layer instead of modifying the existing one. However, this approach compromised the quality of the multi-view images. We suspect this was due to the slower convergence of a new attention module compared to reusing parameters from an existing one. Given our preference to avoid extensive fine-tuning of the diffusion model, we decided not to pursue this approach further. Section Summary The text-to-multi-view diffusion model leverages 3D datasets to generate consistent multi-view images. By converting the original 2D self-attention layer into a 3D attention layer, the model can generate similar images without fine-tuning, ensuring consistency even with large view gaps. The incorporation of a new 3D self-attention layer compromised the generation quality, so the decision was made to reutilize parameters from the existing attention module instead. Section 3.2.2 Camera Embeddings In this section, we'll discuss two key aspects of our research, camera embeddings and data and training. Firstly, let's talk about camera embeddings. Just like in video diffusion models, our model needs to differentiate between various views. Initially, we tried using the same relative position encoding from video diffusion models, thinking that a relative viewpoint would be enough for our tasks. However, we found that this method was too vague and often resulted in repeated views. Instead, we found that embedding the extrinsic camera matrix using a two-layer multilayer perceptron, MLP, led to more accurate results, with each view being distinct from the others. We then had to decide where to incorporate these camera embeddings. We identified two methods, adding each view's camera embedding to its time embedding as residuals, and attaching the camera embeddings to the text embeddings for cross-attention. 
Our experiments showed that both methods worked, but the first was more reliable as the camera embeddings were less intertwined with the text description. Next, let's discuss data and training. Despite having access to ground truth 3D rendered data, we found that how we used this data was crucial to the quality and generalizability of the multi-view diffusion model. We identified four key factors, the choice of viewpoints, the number of views of generated images, the resolution of generated images, and joint training with original text to image datasets. We discovered that rendering with completely random viewpoints made training too difficult, and the model struggled to generate good results. So, for each object, we chose to use different viewpoints uniformly distributed at the same elevation angle, randomly chosen between 0 and 30 degrees. Regarding the number of views, we found that more views made convergence more difficult, so we decided to use only four views for the current models. Following the approach of 0-123, we reduced the image size to 256 by 256 pixels, which greatly improved the multi-view consistency. For training, we fine-tuned our model from the stable diffusion version 2.1 base model, keeping their settings for the optimizers and epsilon prediction. We found that joint training with a larger scale text-to-image dataset improved the generalizability of the fine-tuned model. Formally, given a dataset of images and multi-view images, the multi-view diffusion loss is defined as the expectation of the square of the difference between the actual noise and the noise predicted by the multi-view diffusion model, given the noisy image, the condition, the camera condition, and the time. In practice, we train the multi-view model as a simple 2D text-to-image model on a subset of the LAION dataset by turning off the 3D attention and camera embeddings 30% of the time. Section Summary Camera embeddings are necessary for our model to distinguish between different views, and we found that embedding the extrinsic camera matrix leads to more precise results. We experimented with two methods of injecting camera embeddings, adding them to the time embeddings as residuals or appending them to the text embeddings for cross-attention and found that adding them as residuals is more robust. Additionally, we found that the choice of viewpoints, the number of views, the resolution of generated images, and joint training with original text-to-image datasets are crucial factors for the generalizability and quality of the multi-view diffusion model. We chose to use uniformly distributed viewpoints at the same elevation angle, four views per object, and reduced the image size to 256 by 256 for better multi-view consistency. Joint training with a larger scale text to image dataset also improved the generalizability of the model. Section 3.3 Text to 3D Generation. In this section, we'll discuss how we can generate 3D models from text using a diffusion model. This model can create multi view images that are consistent with the text description. We've identified two ways to use this model for 3D generation. One, we can use the images generated by the model as inputs for a 3D reconstruction method. This method would create 3D content based on these images. However, this approach usually requires many input angles to produce satisfactory results. It also demands high consistency between the input images. While our diffusion model can generate consistent images, we can't guarantee their geometric compatibility. 2. We can use the diffusion model as a basis for 3D optimization through a process called score distillation sampling, SDS. This is the method we've chosen to focus on in our experiments. In our approach, we've made some changes to the existing SDS process. We've replaced the commonly used stable diffusion model with our multi-view diffusion model. This change led to two modifications. We altered the camera sampling strategy. Now, every time we sample, we select a set of view angles that are uniformly distributed on the same elevation angle. We input the absolute camera extrinsic matrix into our diffusion model. Instead of using direction annotated prompts as in DreamFusion, we use the original text prompts to extract the text embeddings. While our modified SDS with multi-view diffusion can generate consistent 3D models, the richness and texture quality of these models are not as good as those images directly sampled by diffusion models. To address this, we've proposed several techniques. We don't sample the time step in a fixed range as in the original SDS. Instead, we gradually reduce the maximum and minimum time step during optimization. To stop the model from generating styles of low-quality 3D models in the dataset, we add a few fixed negative prompts during SDS. To reduce the color saturation from large classifier-free guidance, CFG, we apply clamping methods such as dynamic thresholding or CFG rescale to adjust the denoised image. We've also found that an image reconstruction loss is equivalent to the original SDS when a certain hyperparameter in SDS is equal to the signal-to-noise ratio. 
This image reconstruction loss performs similarly to the original SDS but reduces the color saturation after we apply the CFG rescale trick. To regularize the geometry, we turn on the point lighting and soft shading. For the regularization loss, we only use the orientation loss. Both of these techniques help to smooth the geometry and have little effect on the content in our case. We don't use any sparsity loss to force the separation between the foreground and the background. Instead, we achieve this by replacing the background with random colors. Section Summary In this section, the authors discuss two approaches for utilizing a diffusion model that generates multi-view images from text descriptions for 3D generation. The first approach involves using the multi-view images as inputs for a few-shot 3D reconstruction method, but this method requires a high level of consistency between the input images. Therefore, the authors focus on the second approach, which modifies the existing score distillation sampling SDS, pipeline by replacing the stable diffusion model with their multi-view diffusion model. They propose several techniques to improve the richness and texture quality of the generated 3D models, including linearly annealing the maximum and minimum time step during optimization, adding fixed negative prompts during SDS, and applying clamping methods to adjust the denoised images. Additionally, they use point lighting and soft shading for geometry regularization and only use orientation loss for regularization. Section 3.4 Multi-View Dream Booth for 3D Generation In this section, we'll discuss the creation of a 3D model using a method we call the Multi-View Dream Booth. This process begins with a pre-trained network that we've developed using Multi-View Diffusion. We then adapt this network into a Dream Booth model, which is designed specifically for 3D applications. The Multi-View Diffusion model is quite versatile, and we found that it retains its multi-view capabilities even after tuning. To fine-tune the model, we use two types of loss, an image fine-tuning loss and a parameter preservation loss. In simpler terms, we have a set of identity images, denoted as x underscore id. Our loss for the Dream Booth model is calculated using an equation that combines the image diffusion loss and a term that measures the difference between the initial and final parameters of the multi-view diffusion model. This difference is divided by the total number of parameters, and the result is multiplied by a balancing parameter, which we set to 1. We train this model for about 600 steps, using a learning rate of 2E6, a weight decay of 0.01, and a batch size of 4. This approach strikes a good balance between preserving the identity of the images and stylizing them. To generate a 3D model, we replace the diffusion model with the Dream Booth model in the text to 3D generation process. Once the NERF model is trained, we find that our results alleviate the Janus issue seen in some Dream Booth 3D results, while also producing models with improved detail and quality. For data preparation and diffusion model training, we use the public Objiverse dataset, which was the largest 3D dataset available at the time of this project. We use the names and tags of the objects as their text descriptions. The dataset is quite noisy, so we filter it using a score to remove objects whose rendered images don't match their names. This leaves us with about 350,000 objects. We normalize each object to be at the center and choose a random camera distance, field of view, and elevation. We use a random HDRI from Blender for lighting and 32 uniformly distributed azimuth angles for rendering. To increase the number of training examples, we render each object twice with different random settings. During training, we select a data batch with a 70% chance from the 3D dataset and a 30% chance from the AESV2 subset of the LAION dataset. We fine-tune our model from the stable diffusion version 2.1 base model, keeping their settings for the optimizer and epsilon prediction. We use a reduced image size and a total batch size of 1024 for training and fine-tune the model for 50,000 steps. The training takes about 3 days on 32 NVIDIA Tesla A100 GPS. To account for the visual style difference between the Objiverse and LAION datasets, we add the text 3D asset to the 3D data if the keyword 3D is not in the prompt. Section Summary The authors propose a multi-view dream booth model for 3D generation which extends the pre-trained network from multi-view diffusion. They introduce two types of loss, an image fine-tuning loss and a parameter preservation loss, to maintain the multi-view ability of the model. By training the model with specific settings and using a large dataset, they achieve improved 3D models with better details and quality. Section 4.2 SDS Optimization In this section, we'll be discussing our approach to optimizing synthetic data synthesis, SDS, for multi-view scenarios. We've incorporated our multi-view diffusion guidance into a library that already includes most of the latest techniques for converting text into 3D models. 
Our 3D models are represented using an implicit volume implementation, which uses a multi-resolution hash grid and a multi-layer perceptron, MLP, to predict density and color. When it comes to camera views, we use the same method for sampling the camera as we do for rendering the 3D dataset. We'll provide more details on this in a later section. We optimize our 3D model over 10,000 steps using an Atom W optimizer with a learning rate of 0.01. For SDS, we gradually reduce the maximum and minimum time step from 0.98 to 0.5 and 0.02 respectively over the first 8,000 steps. We also use a rescale factor of 0.5 for the CFG rescale trick. The resolution of the rendering starts at 64 by 64 pixels and is increased to 256 by 256 pixels after 5,000 steps. We also enable soft shading after 5,000 steps. The background is replaced with a 50% probability. Next, we evaluate the quality of the images generated by our proposed multi-view diffusion model and examine how different designs can impact performance. We compare three different attention modules used to model cross-view consistency, 1D temporal self-attention, a new 3D self-attention module, and reusing an existing 2D self-attention module for 3D attention. In our experiment, we trained the models with eight frames across a 90-degree view change, which is similar to video settings. We also maintained a higher image resolution of 512 by 512 pixels, as in the original SD model. Our findings showed that even with such a limited view angle change on static scenes, the temporal self-attention struggled with content shift and couldn't maintain view consistency. We think this is because the temporal attention can only exchange information between the same pixel from different frames, while the corresponding pixels could be far apart when the viewpoint changes. Adding a new 3D attention led to a significant drop in quality without learning consistency. We believe this is because learning new parameters from scratch requires more training data and time, which isn't suitable for our case where only limited 3D models are available. The strategy of reusing 2D self-attention gave the best consistency without compromising the quality of generation. We also conducted a quantitative comparison of the generation quality and text image consistency. We randomly selected 1,000 subjects from the training set and generated four multi-view images using the given prompts and camera parameters. We used the Frechette Inception Distance and Inception Score, IS, to measure image quality, and the score to measure text image consistency. Our models achieved a similar inception score and score to the original training set, indicating good generation quality and text image consistency. Adding a text to image dataset, Layon, further improved the score and inception score. We noticed that our generated images tend to have less brightness change in a gray background, which we believe is due to the color difference between the generated images and training samples. Increasing the batch size from 256 to 1024 didn't significantly improve the quality measure but we found it visually helpful for improving multi-view consistency. Our multi-view diffusion model can generate high-quality, multi-view consistent images that accurately match both the text description and camera parameters. We've included some examples of our multi-view model with unseen prompts that are possibly counterfactual and in a different style from training prompts. Even after fine-tuning, the model is still able to generalize to different text inputs. Section Summary In this section, the authors optimize the multi-view SDS, shape diffusion synthesis, by implementing their multi-view diffusion guidance in a library that includes state-of-the-art methods for text to 3D generation. They use an implicit volume implementation for 3D representation and optimize the 3D model using an Atom W optimizer. They also evaluate the image generation quality of their multi-view diffusion model and compare different attention modules for modeling cross-view consistency, finding that reusing 2D self-attention achieves the best consistency without compromising generation quality. Section 5.23D Generation with Multi-View Score Distillation In this section, we're going to discuss how we applied our multi-view diffusion model to 3D generation using score distillation strategy, SDS, and how it compares to existing methods that convert text into 3D models. We've incorporated SDS into our multi-view diffusion framework, and to ensure a fair comparison, we've also used the same framework for the baseline models we're comparing our method to. We've chosen four baseline models for comparison. DreamFusion IF, Magic 3D IF, Text 2 Mesh IF, and Prolific Dreamer. However, it's important to note that these models might not be exactly the same as the original ones, as they either use non-public diffusion models or their source code wasn't available at the time of writing this paper. For instance, while the original models used different diffusion guidance and 3D representation methods, all the models we're comparing, including ours, use an implicit volume or multi-resolution hash grid as their primary base representation. 
The only exception is text mesh, which uses sign distance function, SDF. Despite these differences, we believe that the baseline models we've chosen represent the best possible re-implementations. To thoroughly test our system and the baseline models, we gathered 40 prompts from various sources, including previous studies, prompts based on the style of existing 3D assets, and real user inputs from a 3D generation startup. Our findings showed that all the baseline models struggled with maintaining consistency across multiple views. Among the three models that used DeepFloid as their diffusion guidance, DreamFusion if, Magic 3D if, and TextMesh if, Magic 3D performed the best by incorporating mesh representation and second stage refinement. However, it still couldn't solve the multi face problem. Prolific Dreamer produced excellent texture quality, but the views didn't come together to form a coherent 3D object. In contrast, our proposed method was able to generate high quality 3D assets in a more stable manner. We found that adding time annealing made the shape more complete, while adding negative prompts significantly improved the visual style, albeit at the expense of text image correspondence. Adding the CFG rescale and shading further enhanced the texture color, making it appear more natural. To further validate the stability and quality of our model, we conducted a user study using the 3D models generated from the 40 prompts. Each user was given five rendered videos and its corresponding text input and was asked to choose their preferred 3D model. We collected feedback from 38 users, and on average, 78% of them preferred our model over the others. This suggests that our model is generally preferred over the best of all baselines, which we believe is a strong testament to the robustness and quality of our proposed method. For more visual results, please refer to the supplementary materials. Section Summary In this section, the authors apply their multi-view diffusion model to 3D generation and compare it with existing text to 3D methods. They use reproduced baselines for fairness, but note that the implementation details may differ from the original papers. The results show that the proposed method generates high-quality 3D assets in a more stable way compared to the baselines, as confirmed by a user study where 78% of users preferred their model over others. Section 5.3 Multi-View Dream Booth Dot. In this section, we're going to discuss the Multi-View Dream Booth, or MV Dream Booth for short. We've included a figure for comparison, where you can see 3D models created by both MV Dream and Dream Booth 3D. In the examples we've provided, you'll notice that the models produced by our method are of superior quality. They exhibit more detailed features, like the intricate curls and hair or the texture of a dog's fur. This is a result of the nerf training process we use, which incorporates a technique known as SDS loss. The use of our MV Dream Booth diffusion models during this process ensures a higher level of geometric consistency, which in turn leads to these more detailed and higher quality results. For more examples and further results, we invite you to visit our project page and check out the supplementary materials we've provided.